Hey everybody. Hey, so now here we are talking about dead reckoning. And really there's a lot of training opportunities if we go east. And a lot of times on your check rides, the examiners like to send guys east. Let's go ahead and throw KAPA to KSNY in there. That's one I see fairly often. I'm not sure why. It's always going to be, they often use one of those airports up there in that area. Uh, Sydney's one of the ones that I'm familiar with. So just keep in mind you may do that. And first off, let me just go ahead and show you what I see a lot of. Uh, students really try to do a great job. We all want to do a good job. So they, they stay well clear. And the, oftentimes they select this little tower right here. I see it a lot, okay? That little tower right there. And if, if you think I'm making fun of you and you're watching this and you know me, trust me, I'm not. A lot of people pick that tower for some reason. There's just something about it. Let's see. And you know as well as I do, that's not correct, right? That little bitty tower, it's possible to mess it up. And I've told you, don't pick something that's possible to mess up. It needs to be so easy that it's impossible to mess up. The second one is then, and also it's on the right side of the airplane. Put it on the left. Let's see. After that, uh, a lot of guys are picking. Um, let me see. I'll use this to help you guys. <laughs> this big giant tower right here. I see that one a lot. I see this reservoir a lot, and I see this big tower, that one, and then Hoyt, I see that one a lot. And I could keep going, but really it seems like those are the big ones that we see a fair amount. And unfortunately, there are really, this is a, there, there's tough options here, right? But I'm gonna give you guys some gouge. The day of your check ride, you really, or on an actual flight, you want those points about 20 miles apart. And you, you would look at this and think to yourself, well, James, I've done that, man. Look at there, 24 miles plus another 25 miles. What more do you want from me? The day of your check ride, you don't want to fly around for 30 minutes with an evaluator just to get to your second checkpoint. We don't have time for that. Nor are these check checkpoints uh, totally impossible to mess up. They need to be completely impossible to make a mistake on. So we're going to pick a first checkpoint that's about 10 miles and it's impossible to mess up. I'm gonna choose the south shore of the Aurora Reservoir right there. Okay, I'll put it on the left side of the airplane so I can clearly identify it even when I'm next to it. Then I'm gonna pick one of these three cities. Oops, cancel that. Let's move this. So Bennett, Bennett doesn't work. You see, it clips the class Bravo. Strasburg works. I'm gonna drop that one right there. Gives me plenty of clearance. It gives me a mile or so. Just kinda of pinch that guy, we'll see. Looks like about two and a half miles of clearance. If I'm within the practical test standards of two miles left or right of course, that should easily keep me clear of the class Bravo. And with a course, and with a leg that short, it's only, okay, eight, Wait, what? I can't even understand all these numbers. Guys, we gotta clean this up. I don't know what it means to go from 36 dot 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 to 39 dot dot dot. Oh man, people mess this up a lot. Let me show you how to make how to clean this up so that when your evaluator says, well, what time are we gonna be at our next checkpoint? You look at this and you're like, 18, 20, uh, 11, um, four, oh my gosh, and it ends up, causing a real disaster in the cockpit. So cockpit organization is very, very important for success on your second leg, which is the dead reckoning piece. Let me just tell you, if your iPad is in your lap and the sun's beating down on it, it usually fails about right here. This is where the point where it overheats, has a little red thing on it, and right when you need it to work most, it doesn't work. Or it's in your lap turned off with a checklist or something like that that you're not using on top of it. It's really important that you organize the cockpit correctly. I've seen one where the guy's uh, cord for his headphones was causing the whole flight to come undone. So cockpit organization is absolutely huge. And you really want to pick checkpoints about 10 miles on the first one, 10 miles on the second one, get all your tasks accomplished. Those tasks are climb out, visually intercept the first checkpoint, go there. At 1,000 feet, accelerate to your cruise climb configuration. Flip all the appropriate switches, turn all the correct knobs, and run the climb checklist. Then simulate calling the flight, ser for flight service station. Then simulate calling the uh, ATC and getting flight following. 
And finally, when you're approaching your level off altitude of 7,500 if you live in Denver, or whatever you picked, when you're within 200 feet of that altitude, the only thing we're gonna do is focus on the transition. That is a high threat area, and the only task we're gonna focus on is leveling off at 7,500. Once that's complete, the airplane's on speed, RPM is set, mixture's adjusted, etc. We will run the cruise checklist. Then we will perform navigation actions again. Focus on flying, second navigation, third talking on the radio. Okay, that concludes that. For now, I'm going to go ahead and stop this video, and I'm going to prepare you to come back, and we're going to talk about how to set up these points where all this looks really good, and it's easy to, to determine what it's trying to tell us en route. Thanks a lot. See you in just a moment.